Well, here's some food for thought. More than 200 U.S. Special Operations Forces have moved into a new home in Afghanistan. But instead of being housed in a military facility as they have in the past, this group was put up in a compound owned and operated by the security company formerly known as Blackwater, which then changed its name to Z and is now called Academy. Uh, the base is called Camp Integrity and is a more than 435,000 square foot forward operating base located not far from the Kabul International Airport. Now they say the reason for this it, new home is simply overcrowding, that there wasn't space at existing facilities for the additional spe special ops forces that would be coming in. Uh, but Academy got more than 200, or excuse me, $22 million, a no-bid contract by the way, The contract, uh, by the way, it runs through May 2015, even though most U.S. forces are supposed to be home by 2014. I want to talk more about the various implications of this with Michael O'Brien. He's the author of the book, America's Failure in Iraq, Intervention to Withdrawal. And he joins me now in studio. Uh, hey there, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I I'm good. Uh, let me just ask you first. I mean, how common is this for, uh, you know, military personnel to be housed, uh, sort of put up by private contractors? To the best of my knowledge, it's not common at all. It's not done. Um, I've never heard of it. I've never heard of such a thing. You know, the, the, uh, the you're in a foreign country. That you listed there, but they they didn't uh, you know and and they built they they might have built the bases and stuff like that, but they didn't. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is a, a base that it's a black they own it. It's their it's their base. They probably have some kind of a land lease uh, from the uh, from the government of uh, Afghanistan. I don't know the the specifics of of the deal. Um, but I've never heard of anything. I've never heard of anything like this. What about this aspect that that it goes on that the contract, this twenty-two million dollar contract, it goes through uh, May of twenty fifteen? I mean, do you think that tells us anything about what the? Uh, you know, indefinitely. Uh, Iraq, same thing. I mean, we're, n n all of our forces are not gone. Uh, there still a lot of them are there. But it really, be, it, it, there's a couple of things. First of all, is uh, I mean, really, why is this company still in business after the Nisor Square massacre in September of 2007 in Baghdad? Why is the company still in business, number one? Yeah, certainly this is a company known uh, for, for some of its, uh, the contractors there, uh, shooting and killing uh, multiple civilians. Oh, yeah. It's been known for stealing weapons. Yeah. Uh, we into... Uh, you know, I, I talk about this extensively in my book and on my website, but, you know, we're taking mercenary, you know, this is taking mercenary to another level. It's a role reversal. Uh, we have mercenaries operating on foreign soil out of American bases or out of their own compounds and safe houses, but now it's a role reversal. We have U.S. forces occupying, um, uh, you know, being being housed uh, on a, uh, uh, in facilities on a, on a mercenary. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, per, personally, I don't <laughs> and, and buy that. And it's interesting, that, too. So the, so the name of this uh, compound, oh. Forward Operating Base, is oh. uh, Camp Integrity. Camp and and Integrity. by the way, Michael, you'll be pleased to know, if you're interested, you can actually um, buy a T-shirt. Um, there are T-shirts. We've had one up on the screen here. Uh, Camp Integrity. There it is. Um, now, that, that is an oxymoron. That's about as, makes about as much sense as jumbo shrimp. <laughs> I, mean, um, I, I mean, it is interesting. I mean, talk a little bit more. I mean, you talked sort of about uh, the 
reputation of this. this You know, after the Nisor Square massacre, how come they still maintain a government contract? How come they were not debarred, as the term is, from future government contracts? Um, the, 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 now there, now there, uh, you, you, the, the, there is no wall. There is no firewall. There's not even a pretense of a separation of 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 uh, of, of uh, uh, contractor, you know, su supplier of services to a U to the U.S. government. It's you know, they're they're. <laughs> They're almost as close to the term being in bed together. have a, somebody go through and say, um, because this was a no-bid contract, we have to uh, make sure that it was a, a fair price was offered uh, and, you know, it was, the deal was good. So from what we understand, these, these troops started being housed there in May of 2012. Well, this contract, um, read to me when this was signed. I don't know um, Okay, it's... 31 August of 2012. Right, so that is three months after. Uh, after they the were fact. already there. After the um, fact. And, and so what, what do you think this says, this after the fact... Well, it's nice to see, it's nice to see that they And that the costs of this government contract are fair and reasonable based on price analysis. Uh, not so much the wording, uh, but the fact that it was signed after the decision was already not only made, but after the consequences of the decision yeah. were in place. And how do they know if it's a fair and reasonable thing? Did they do what's called an independent government estimate uh, to compare that? Where's the justification that it had to be sole source or other than full and open competition? Uh, was it an emergency? Uh, was that the only vendor that could do that? Um, and, and the other thing is, too, if they started doing it back then, in, in, you know, in May and then signed it in August, uh, you know, where is the justification of being... And you'd have to, you know, that would be a, a FOIA request, a, a Freedom of Information Act right. request. Right, would be an interesting thing to find out but, if, uh, uh, if we actually could. Real quick, we're almost out of time. Uh, do you have any idea, Michael, uh, what these um, contractor bases are like as compared to what regular military bases are like? Well, I lived on a FOB, like I said. I was in the, uh, what the, the international zone, formerly called the Green Zone in Baghdad. Um, but I, I was on many, many fobs all around the country, and I would venture to say they probably are very, very, very much the same. Uh, Hesco barrier walls, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, or on a piece of land, I should say, near uh, near the airport there in Kabul. Probably a bunch of Hesco walls, probably a bunch of T walls. Uh, probably didn't take much to build, and then um, uh, trailers, prefab trailers with electrical and and plumbing, basic plumbing, interesting, and, okay, and, and internet cabling. Yeah, okay, not a lot. Michael O'Brien, the author of America's Failure in Iraq. Thanks as always uh, for being here and sharing uh, your insight. Great, thanks for having me.